Good evening and Tashi Delek to all. On today's Tibet TV weekly panel discussion program, we have a very special guest, Nobel Peace Laureate, His Grace Archbishop Desmond Tutu. As you all know, Archbishop Desmond Tutu is in Dharamshala for a seven-day visit to meet his friend and fellow Nobel Peace Laureate, His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama. Together, the two are collaborating on a book called The Book of Joy. Taking this rare opportunity of his presence in the town of Dharamshala, we have invited Archbishop Desmond Tutu for this program and we will discuss certain issues including the purpose of his visit to Dharamshala, his friendship with His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama and Tibetans and his support for the Tibetan cause. We will also try to explore his views on the peaceful nature of the Tibetan struggle. But before we begin the discussion, let me briefly introduce to you Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Archbishop Desmond Tutu was born in 1931 in South Africa. In 1960, he was ordained as an Anglican priest and received his bachelor's and master's degree in theology from King's College, London. On his return to South Africa, Tutu joined his fellow brothers and sisters in their fight to end the apartheid regime. Through his writings and lectures at home and abroad, he consistently advocated reconciliation between all parties involved in the apartheid. In 1984, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in recognition of his role as a unifying leader in the campaign to resolve the problem of apartheid in South Africa. After the fall of apartheid, Archbishop Tutu headed the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Since his retirement, Archbishop Tutu has worked as a global activist on issues pertaining to democracy, freedom and human rights, among many other issues. That's the brief introduction of our today's speaker, Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Your Grace, welcome to Dharamshala, Thank the you. official seat of uh, His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, your spiritual brother to quote His Holiness, and also the seat of the Central Tibetan Administration. This is your second visit to this place. Please tell the viewers, what is the purpose of your visit? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's always lovely to have an opportunity to meet with one of the most wonderful uh, individuals in the world. Uh, and I, I don't need uh, in any purpose at all uh, but yes, you're, you're quite right, as you said in the introduction, um, we are together being interviewed um, for a book, uh, the Book of Joy. Um, and uh, every day we have had two sessions with, with His Holiness um, and the the uh, person who is uh, going to be uh, and the, the one who is going to be writing uh, the book um, but we we we've, we we've come and and said you know, although uh, his birthday is still uh, some time away um uh, I, I I won't be able to to see him then. Um, I will want to be wishing him uh, God's richest blessings. Uh, he who is such a wonderful conduit of blessings to others. Okay. Your Grace, uh, you are one of the strong supporters of the Tibetan cause for the last many years. In fact, every Tibetan know that. But what many Tibetans don't know is how you first came to be associated with the Tibetans and what drew you to their cause. Please tell us on that. What? I can't, I don't remember now. <laughs> I seem to, be, to have been to have been uh, in, 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 in involved uh, from the moment that I, I got to know uh, His Holiness. Uh, we, we met 
in uh, the United States um, a few years ago. And um, I have generally been um, very, very upset uh, at, at any instance of injustice. And uh, we see here uh, a, a gross example um, of huge injustice being done to a gentle people. Um, and of course, I've, I've also um, a great, great admiration for the Dalai Lama, uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Because I've, I've used him uh, many times as an example, I've, I, I have said, um, can you imagine someone who has been uh, in exile over 50 years, uh, who can be so, so serene, so compassionate, so caring, uh, and, and, and hoping uh, very much that uh, we we will want uh, uh, for the world to to know uh, the gross injustice that is has been done to the Tibetan people. Um, I I I have been privileged to. Uh, to, to have a special relationship with him. Uh, <laughs> when, when, whenever we meet, um, it's, it's uh, that he, you see uh, two uh, perhaps mischievous people uh, meeting together. Um, but I, I, I have the, the greatest possible admiration and uh, I, I I would want to be able to say um, uh, to uh, the people of Tibet and Tibetans outside there is no way in which injustice and oppression and evil uh, can um, in the end prevail. Justice and goodness and love and laughter um, which are embodied uh, so wonderfully in His uh, Holiness that uh, they will without doubt um, prevail. It's just, it's just a, a great sadness that it has to be at such uh, great cost, uh, the, the, the anguish that um, uh, Tibetans in exile feel, and, and how the Dalai Lama is sometimes treated as he has been treated by the South African government, uh, that he, he is not able to to, to travel to enter South Africa, um, and more, most recently um, that uh, His Holiness the Pope uh, was not uh, willing to meet with him. And I have said I, I admire the, His Holiness the Pope very, very much. In fact, I said, uh, um, I, I have to say that I am, I am sad uh, that the, the, the Pope did not meet His Holiness. Um, having said that, uh, I wanted to, them to know that I love uh, the, His Holiness the Pope 
uh, as much as I love His Holiness the Dalai Lama. <laughs> Uh, your Grace, uh, one question uh, with regard to your friendship with His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama calls you his spiritual brother. Yeah. We all know that you and uh, His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama share a great strong bond of friendship. Yeah. Please tell us how did two of you first come into contact with each other and how did the friendship of two of you grow over the years? Yes, I don't uh, I remember the year, but I know that we we met uh, in uh, in the United States, and um, I think it is a, it is one of those things where your the the chemistry between us um, happened just like that, um, and. Uh, and because he is, um, well, he is serene, but and joyful, and uh, 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 mischievous. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that uh, I, I, he's such a wonderful um, uh, advertisement for for goodness, uh, and and uh, and our our love for each other. Uh, has uh, uh, has blossomed, uh, especially uh, as he has be, he has met with these setbacks. When uh, for my 80th birthday, uh, we wanted him to be the first to give the peace lecture uh, associated with uh, our birthdays. Uh, the, the, they would not let him in. And of course, recently, uh, when uh, there was going to be a Nobel uh, uh, summit in Cape Town, uh, and, and I, I am very sad because I, 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 I asked him how many uh, uh, divisions, I, military divisions he commanded that they should be so afraid of him. Uh, Your Grace, uh, one question related to the middle way approach or the middle way policy of the yes. Central Tibetan yes. Administration. You are aware of that. Uh, see, the Central Tibetan Administration, its position with regard to its struggle for freedom is middle way policy yes. which does not seek independence or separation from China. Yes. In fact, what we seek is what we call genuine autonomy or yes. meaningful autonomy within the framework of People's Republic of China. Yes. But China on the other hand says this middle way policy is an independence in disguise or it has a hidden agenda that it wants to separate from China. Yes. So you see, there are two opposing views. What comment do you want to make? No, I just want to say uh, again that uh, I, I, I hope so very much that uh, the Chinese administration uh, will uh, help to improve their, their <laughs> public image uh, by allowing uh, the, His Holiness the Dalai Lama to return to his home uh, with all the Tibetans who want to go back home, um, that they, 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 they must believe uh, that Tibetans have said categorically um, they support the middle way and uh, they do not want to secede, but they, they want to be able to, uh, to uh, be able to continue with their traditions, their language, uh, their, their religion, um, and th that that poses no threats to anyone. Uh, and I, I, I am certain. I mean that uh, if they, if they, if they were to 
to, to look uh, with an unbiased eye at what the middle way means, um, they, would, they would see that it poses no threats at all uh, and that it would improve uh, the image of the Chinese government. Uh, yes, uh, and, and I, I pray that uh, it can happen in our lifetime. I pray that uh, 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 Tibetans will be able to return uh, so that I too, uh, at uh, the age of 83, uh, will be able to visit uh, Tibet and celebrate uh, with you there uh, uh, when you, you celebrate the, your homecoming. And can I finish off yes. just by saying, uh, my dear, dear friend, uh, your, your, His Holiness, your, your, the Dalai Lama, you are a wonderful, wonderful gift uh, to the world. And I thank uh, our God for you and want to wish you uh, the, the most gloriously happy birthday. And uh, try and remember that you are a holy man and don't behave on that day mischievously. <laughs> Thank you, Your Grace. That's a very powerful message. Uh, with this, we come to the end of our program. And uh, uh, I hope the viewers uh, enjoyed listening to Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Thank you, Your Grace, for taking your time out to speak to us. I'm sure you're Great very, job. very busy. Great uh, it's a wonderful Great experience to hear your uh, opinion about some of the Great issues job. we discussed. Thank you, Great Your job. Grace, once again. Thank you.